Hello and welcome to the Remedy Fibers podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet hosted by me, Jillian. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So today we have some finished objects, spinning related. I have two works in progress and we'll just kind of catch up. Sorry that this video is coming a little bit later than anticipated. I normally like to upload my videos and post them Wednesday mornings, but I'm going to be rethinking my upload times just because right in the middle of the week can be really challenging. It gives me extra time on the weekend to work on things, but sometimes Monday and Tuesday, especially for this week, it just kind of went over my head and it was Tuesday late at night when I realized I didn't even record my episode and I have to take advantage of the sun so that we could get some good lighting over here so I'm thinking maybe pushing it to Thursday or Friday let me know down in the comments if there's a preference but I'm trying to see if there's a way for me to make enough things just so I have enough content for the week but also not scrambling Tuesday night trying to make a video so if you're new here, I live in Northern California with my husband and dog Benny. I love everything yarn related and I hope you stay for my yarn journey. But we'll get started with my first finished object and I have finally completed my Nest Fiber Advent spinning project. If you follow me on Instagram, it's also Remedy Fibers, you would have seen this already. But look at these big jumbo skeins. So all in all, there's about 600 yards combined for both of these skeins. They've already been wet blocked dried left to hang and i'm really really happy with it i didn't measure how many wraps per inch because i wanted to skein them up like this for you to see but once i wind them up i'll see more or less what type of yardage do i have worsted weight fingering weight i'm sure they'll be arranged some of it is a bit thinner some of it is a bit thicker but they just look so beautiful so colorful i thought originally i was just going to keep them separate but when i was winding them up i just started doing the magic knots and just putting it all together and I forgot who if I can find I'll link them down below but someone used their hand spun to make the pressed flowers shawl and I know that that one has been like a hot item a lot of people have been making it they also said how tedious it can be because of the mosaic I don't know if it's it's color work or some type of mosaic knitting and I'm thinking I have enough yards to not make only a shawl but also the pullover. And I'm not really a big shawl person. I actually gave away all my shawls when I was moving a few years ago, but I was thinking maybe the pullover. I just need to find a DK weight to kind of be the matching color. So let me know down in the comments below. Do you think I should go for like a black so that the hand spun color ombres can really pop? Or like a white tannish color so that it can also pop I don't want this to get lost in the pullover the only downside is that this did bleed when I went to go wash it so if I do go for a light color I worry that it might taint the color like so let's say it's white it'll come out like a pink or something because of how colorful this is so I'm really happy with it I can open them up for you but you can see that it's just a whole mix of different different colors and they'll kind of merge together but it looks like a lot of yards but I think it's just since it's so heavy and thick in weight it's it looks like it's there's more than what there really is so overall I'm so happy over the moon with how this project came out it took me about three months to spin this up work on it from start to finish with some breaks in between but I really started taking it more serious and it really got me back into spinning again and I'll show you what my next finished object is now. So next up is my Wonderland Dye Works. This is my first skein completed and I am so ecstatic over this. It's so beautiful. I didn't even know that the braid was kind of like a tonal when I was spinning it and it just came out so pretty. It's actually very very soft. There's a lot of yardage in here. I didn't measure the yardage. I'm going to wait to the very end to kind of calculate that because I have to wind it and do all, of, all of these steps. I just wanted to wet block and show it to you here. But I'm really happy with it. I've never knit, crocheted with such a beautiful color. And you can really tell the work, the hard work that the dyer put into this game because the colors are just so shiny. So this blend is 80% merino, 20% tussle silk. And originally last week, I said I wanted to make the DRK traveler hoodie. But now that I feel the texture, this feels like it might be too soft. I don't know, I'm going to see what type of yarn she used, but I, I think it's like too soft that it will kind of 
work better in a drapey project something that's does it need like the stiffness or, i don't know if you felt it you'll kind of see what i'm going with so i don't know if this is going to be like a different type of project i'm going to see how much yardage i can yield for my other braids it's going to take me a while so i'm still working on my second hank from one braid so i'm thinking i can get three skeins out of one braid I have three braids, so that's about nine skeins. What I'm gonna make is still up in the air, just because after spinning with it, it's very, it's very soft. It's very drapey. I think that silk content really would be a nice in a drapey garment compared to like the Traveler's Cardigan, which looks like it needs more of a stiff, more of a firmer type of material. So if you have any ideas, I would love to hear them. I'm hoping that I can yield close to a thousand yards on this. So far, we're looking good because this is quite heavy in the yardage. I can just feel it and tell, but I'll see what the final calculation is towards the end of the project. Next up, we have my first work in progress, and it is the Felix cardigan. And so this is how it's looking so far. When you last saw it, I think I was trying to finish a sleeve. But one sleeve is done. I said I was gonna work on the other sleeve, but I'm gonna hold on that because I ran out of yarn. And I decided to finish the body. So the body is all knit, the ribbing has been all knit. And then I started working on the button band. And in the pattern, it tells you to pick up every X amount of stitches, but you're skipping stitches along the way. And for some reason, I'll insert a picture because I don't think I'm going to be able to successfully show you. But for some reason, by doing that, it cinched in the button band. Like, it's it cinched in the sweater. And I just don't like how it looks. So I'm going to be ripping this out. But when I redo the button band, I'm going to pick up every stitch along the edge. And this yarn is kind of hard to pull apart. So I'm going to have to do that off camera. It's just very, it's kind of like a glue is in there. So I'll be working on removing this button band. The good thing is that it didn't take too much of my time. Like I can, it, it wasn't like an hour. It was probably like 30 minutes or something like that. I was watching The Sims. Someone played The Sims while I was doing the button band. And then after I finished it, it just didn't look right. And I really want to do the button band for the left and the right side. Then do the neck band because honestly, my honest opinion is I'm not happy with it. I love how it looks. I just don't really like the way the designer, like the measurements, like the, the measurements that are on paper to like how it fits the body. And some people made some beautiful ones. Some people said that they made it work to like align with their body measurements. But all this work, if I'm not going to wear it, it's going to have to get ripped. And that's just like a sad reality that I'm kind of sort of facing that is why i'm so impatient to cast on the button band and the neck because that's really going to make or break the sweater and this yarn does not grow it's east x let lopi in the galaxy colorway it does not grow so what i see is what i'm going to get so with that being said i did order some two more balls of the east x let lopi so i can finish the sleeve and then just have some extra in case the neck band and the button band take more yarn than i need because as of right now this is all that i have left for button band and neck band so i didn't want to be cheap and just get one and then have to order again so i did order two and i did order those knitting needles that i mentioned that i needed for a different project as well as the surrey silk to knit my next cardigan that'll be a future project that i talk about so if you have some thoughts on how i can retweak the felix cardigan i'm going to give it hope i'm hoping that i can finish that up my yarn should be coming in tomorrow so i'm hoping that i can finish this sweater up by this weekend block it see how it's gonna fit the downside it is very itchy however it would be more so of a fall winter piece and i'll be wearing a long sleeve with it i'll be wearing layers so it can combat that itchy factor so we'll see how it goes but i'm learning a lot from the felix cardigan as well as what type of yarn content i want in my future garments 
So next up, this was a super random cast on, which is unlike me, but I decided to cast on my birthday yarn. So if you watched my San Francisco vlog, you would see that I have bought this yarn over at Firebird Yarns. And this is in the Seismic Dye Works and the colorway is Sugar Daddy. But they had an exclusive colorway called Sugar Daddy that you can only find at the store. I only bought one skein thinking that I can make one of the Jessie Mae ripple tops. I needed two skeins for that. So I had this lying around since November and I have this one and I have another single skein and I said oh maybe I can combine it with something else but the more that I say that the more time goes by without me using it. So I did a super random cast on. Hohi Locatelli just came out with a one skein shawl pattern called Amrin and this just came out March of this year so just last month and I decided to cast this on. I have good news and bad news. The good news is that it's coming out super, super cute. It's an asymmetrical shawl, and I haven't done a shawl in a really long time. I literally just said, like, I'm not a shawl person, but I do have a white dress that I bought, and I want to wear this with that. And I just think it's a really pretty color, really fun. And it will be my birthday shawl because once it's completed, I will always have that memory of buying this yarn, my husband buying me this yarn for my 30th birthday. So... <laughs> The bad news is last night I got an email from Ravelry that there was a mistake in the pattern and I'm going to have to rip it out because I want to knit it properly. I want to knit it to how it's supposed to be. Something about I wasn't supposed to slip on the odd sides. I don't know. I don't know how much that's going to impact the overall look of the pattern if it even makes a difference. But I'm going to listen to her. And this pattern is really teaching me a lot. More so than my garments. I never knew how to do a SKP2. And I also never did short rows in garter. I always did short rows in stockinette. And so that was a learning curve. And you can see the short rows in the lace section. Well, you can't see them. But that's where I did them. And then they're kind of worked in wedges so it's a weird construction it's a different look i'll insert a picture here so you can see it but overall i'm really happy with it but sadly all of this work and all of these hours are going to get ripped out so wish me luck I, it's not too bad like good thing i didn't get more into this this probably was like one movie worth of knitting so this weekend a movie that i highly recommend if you love rom-coms was wedding season so cute i love these type of tropes where they're like fake dating and then you could just dot 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 i'm not gonna tell you anything more but it's called wedding season so it's an hour and 40 ish minutes and so pretty much during that movie i was working on this so yeah maybe an hour and a half worth of work that i need to rip out but it's okay it's okay and that movie wedding season was so good that i would watch it again and then i started watching no pressure which is about like this city girl who goes back to farm life and i think she ends up falling in love with the land and the farm that her grandma gave her but then she might also fall in love with somebody so i'm always here for like a cheesy romance type of movie and i think that was it i think that's all that i recently watched other than some youtube movies not YouTube, some, you, some YouTube podcasts. So let me know down in the comments, what are you watching on Netflix? Because I need something to recast this on with. I really need my spinning shows. I need something to watch while I'm spinning. And nothing too scary. Or it can be scary, but nothing bloody or gory. I can't. I can't take that. But that's all that I have for this week. This was just a quick check-in. Let me know what you've been up to, what you're working on. We did have a Q&A section, so go back to my community tab if you have any questions that you would like for me to answer. So far, I have one question about my cutie patootie little dog named Benny that I will answer once we have maybe two or three more questions because right now I literally only have one. So you can find that in my community tab or you can also include it down in the comments if you have any Q&A that you would like for me to answer. But thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you and your family are happy, healthy, and safe and hope to talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.